Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you a simple little collage project that you can do with images that you have from your own collection. And I'm going to show you some of the strengths of Lightroom and some places where it fails and where really you need to take your project to Photoshop. As always, before we begin, let's have a look and see what it is that we're trying to achieve. What I'm going to show you is how you could take two images and assemble them together into a funky sort of collage using the strengths of Lightroom and the strengths of Photoshop. Now the bird here is part of a assemblage that is in a sort of shopping centre area in Melbourne and I shot the bird and we're going to have a look at that image first because that we're going to fix up in Lightroom. But then we're going to collage it with a background that I shot in Adelaide somewhere and I'm going to add the two together and we'll have to do that in Photoshop. We'll also have to do something in Photoshop because there's actually a stick that holds this bird to the rest of the assemblage and we're going to have to remove that. But let's get started in Lightroom by having a look at our starter image. So this is our starter image in Lightroom and Frankly, you wouldn't give tuppence for this image. It really is pretty awful. So let's bring in the develop module and let's bring in the tools that we're going to use here in the develop module. So the first thing I'm going to do is crop this image so that we can see it a little more clearly. And you can see very clearly, of course, the stick that's sitting out the edge of the bird that we're going to remove in Photoshop because it just does not remove very well in Lightroom. Now the bird needs a whole heap of work, so we're going to start in the basic panel. I'm going to convert this to process version 2012 by just alt clicking on the icon there so that we get the most recent version of the tools. Now the exposure in this image is way out, so first of all we need to increase the exposure, which is bringing back some of the original colour in the image. We can also make it a little more contrasty and then we can work on things like adjusting the highlights and shadows if we want a bit more detail out of the bird we can wind up the shadows perhaps even open up the blacks and certainly increase clarity and vibrance vibrance is going to be color clarity is just going to give us some mid-tone contrast enhancement now we've got a bit of color back into the image but I think that we can do better but what I'm going to do is switch to the adjustment brush tool because this is going to allow us to separately adjust areas of the image so I'm going to click on it and I'm going to start with the bird's feet because I have a brush that's sized pretty well for the bird's feet so let's just zoom in here I'm going to click on the feet. Now I've got auto mask selected and let's just do show mask overlay so we can see how this paints. Provided I keep that little X in the area that is covered by the feet and it doesn't go out, this paintbrush is going to mask automatically for me. So it's going to take a lot of the masking work away. So I'm just going to paint over the feet because the feet of a seagull at least those from this area of Australia are really, really orange. So I'm going to try and bring back some of that orange colour here just by painting over the legs. And now let's zoom back out again. I'm going to turn off the mask overlay and I'm going to find an orange for the legs. So I'm going to click on the colour here. And I'm going to find a really, really bright saturated orange colour at the same time I'm going to increase the highlights and the shadows here to try and get some more lightness in here so that when we do apply the orange colour we're actually going to be able to see it. So there's the orange in place, I'm just going to click done. Now I can also bring in some detail into the bird. I want to show you how to do that with the adjustment brush. First of all I'm just going to select it and let's show the mask overlay so we can see what we're doing. I'm going to turn off auto mask. I'm going to increase my brush here a bit because I want to actually just paint over the bird. Now I've just rethought that. Let's go back to auto mask but I'm just going to paint over an area of the bird that I might want to bring in a little bit more sort of contrasty shadow detail. So let's just grab that area, turn off the mask overlay 
and then perhaps increase the contrast but perhaps decrease the exposure a little bit here to add some shadow under the bird. We can also increase clarity. We might want to bring up the saturation and then I'm going to click done and let's go into the more highlight areas of the bird again with the adjustment brush. Again just clicking to pin down the brush. Let's show the selected mask overlay so we can see the area that we're working in here because I've got the auto masking on. I'm not having to do all this masking work myself. I'm just painting over the areas that I'm interested in affecting. So having done that, let's turn off the mask overlay. Now we can again increase the contrast and we may want to increase the highlights here to make it a little bit brighter and perhaps even increase the shadows to get some of the detail out of the shadow areas in particular, this area of the bird. And then we can add a color in if we want to. So we could add in a sort of yellow color or a pinky orange. We can really do whatever it is that we want here. Actually, I'm going to opt for a sort of bluey green here, I think. So let's add that color back in. And then maybe we can go for some yellow areas. So again, I've got clicked on new and I'm just going to brush into some of these areas on the wing. Now this is the kind of fix that I find is easier to do in Lightroom just simply because you can sort of paint and color in Lightroom very, very easily. So let's go and get a sort of yellow here for this area of the wing. Now the other thing that I want to do before I leave here is to just draw attention a little bit to what's in the bird's beak. So again, let's zoom in here and let's go and get our adjustment brush. I think that zoom was very effective. So let's just get the adjustment brush. Let's show the selected mask so that we can see that we're actually painting on the area that we're wanting to paint onto. Don't really want to paint on that bird's beak. So let's just get the brush and I'm going to press Alt or Option to allow me to paint out the mask where I don't want it to appear. And let's rehide it and now we can bring in some detail into this object that the bird has in its beak. Let's zoom out of here. So now because of this was shot in not very good conditions. In fact, the light through the ceiling has thrown everything in the foreground into shadow. It's got a lot of noise in this image. So I'm going down to the detail panel here. I'm going to kill some of this noise. I'm going to adjust up to flatten out some of the luminance noise. And because this is going into a collage, I'm really not worried about the fact that I'm somewhat destroying the quality of the image in doing that. I may apply some sharpening to the image though. By winding up the sharpening, I'm going to go for, I think, a lowish sort of radius, maybe about 0.7. Let's just adjust the detail here at about 16. And then let's go and get the masking. I just want to mask so that only the bird is being sharpened and only the areas of interest on the bird are being sharpened. Now that's pretty much as far as we can take this bird in Lightroom because I can't get rid of the stick very easily and I certainly can't kill this background very easily. So we're going to take this now to Photoshop. To do that, I'm just going to right click and choose Edit in Adobe Photoshop CC. So let's just enlarge Photoshop. And here is our image in Photoshop. Now I have also a seascape here that I'm going to use. So we can just drag and drop the seascape into this image. I'm going to double click on the background layer and I'm going to move the bird above the seascape so that when we get to it, the seascape is going to be in position. Now for the bird, I want to get rid of this stick. So let's just zoom in to this area. I don't 
don't like it when my images snap so I'm just going to try and avoid that if I possibly can. Okay. The starting point for this I think is going to be to try and use the spot healing brush tool to do most of the fix for me. So I'm going to target the spot healing brush tool. For protection I'm going to duplicate this layer here and just tuck a copy of it away just in case I need it later on. Typically we'll do that if I use some tool like this spot healing brush tool. I'm going to click where I want the fix to begin and then shift click at the end and now what Photoshop does is it attempts to fix that entire area. It's done a reasonable job, it's not the world's best job but I think I can work around that. I'm going to now select the clone stamp tool because that will allow us to make the more minor fixes. I'm going to alt click over an area I want to use and then start painting in the fix. And I'm just going to adjust my brush as I go to get the best possible fix for the image. I'm actually looking for a piece of the image that I can use for this edge. I'm not seeing anything particularly useful so let's just go and try and draw it in. doesn't need to be perfect but we obviously want to get as good a fix as we can. So I've got another bit of a problem here. Again I'm just going to clone this minor issue out. So now we've removed the stick from the bird. Let's just zoom out and see what we've got. We've removed the stick from the bird so the bird is now flying free. It's time to bring in the background so let's just select the bird and I'm going to do that using the quick selection tool because it's actually going to select pretty quickly and pretty easily with this tool. If the tool doesn't get the area, if it goes too far, just hold the Alt or Option key down and just drag over the area that you want excluded from the selection. So there's another area in here, I just don't want to include that and I don't want to include that. But it's quite a handy tool, this quick select tool. All you have to do is just drag roughly across the area that you want to select and Photoshop does pretty much all of the selecting work for you. I want to be a little bit more careful around the legs. And always aware that you can quickly press the undo key if all of a sudden the entire image gets selected. But I'm thinking that this is actually going to be a pretty good selection made here now. Now I've got the bird selected, I'm just going to choose select inverse to invert the selection and just press delete to remove the background and then control D to deselect the selection. And now the bird is floating free and we can place it over our background. Now the background is probably going to look a little bit better if it is made into something that looks a little bit more funky because obviously a tin bird flying over a seascape is in the realms of being pretty funky. So let's just attack this and turn it into a sort of oil painting. So I've got this layer selected, filter, convert for smart filters and then let's go and get the oil painting filter. To do that I'll choose filter and then oil paint. Now this filter is new to Photoshop, I want to think it's CS6, but you can find something else in the sort of painting area that you could use in an earlier version of Photoshop. Now I had these settings quite low before um, and this time I think I really want to make this quite an obvious stylized image. So let's take 
these values up. Okay, so I've taken cleanliness really high and that's giving me an even more sort of oil painting look. Not really taking this too seriously because as I said, there's a metal bird floating over, flying over the top of this. So let's click OK. And we'll return to Photoshop and now we have the background behind the bird and if we're not happy with the position we've got we can actually drag a different portion of the image into position. Now before we finish I just want to have a look at the color issue that we have. We have a background here that is a little bit different color sort of toning than the bird itself and I think I want to fix that so I can do that by using what's called match color. So I'm going to target the bird layer because that's the one I want to change. I'm going to choose image adjustments and then match color. This is a handy tool for matching colors within an image and between two images. So what we're going to do is ignore the target for now and let's go to the source here and I'm just going to select the image that I'm working in because I want to use this second layer as my color match. So I'm going to go to the layer list and this is the layer I want to use, layer 1. I want to base my color match on the actual background and what that does is it applies the colors from layer 1 to my image. Now if I click on neutralize I'm going to get still a slightly different effect and then I can also adjust the color intensity and the fade and really what I'm going to do here is just work out something that's going to be a solution that's going to blend this bird in a little bit better into its background and I'm thinking that neutralize is going to be an option here and I may just wind down the color intensity a bit. And when I'm happy with the result, let's just have a look at the preview. This is the before and this is the after. So you can see that we're bringing in more of the blue colors and the sandy colors of the seascape into the bird and I'll click OK. So there's my finished version this time of my image in Photoshop. Now because I took it out of Lightroom into Photoshop, all I need to do is to click the close button and say yes I do want to save those changes before I close. So having done that, we'll be taken automatically back into Lightroom where this image will now be saved alongside the original and we can have a look at it. So that's now closed. Let's go back to Lightroom and here is our new version of the collaged image. This is the one I showed you originally. This is the one that we've just been working on here now. So there's a way that you can work on an image in Lightroom taking advantage of the strengths of Lightroom and then switch to Photoshop when it is that you need the strengths of Photoshop for example to remove that stick that was attached to the bird. Photoshop is much better at that really than Lightroom and then of course when you want to put two layers together you'll need to be working in Photoshop. Thank you for joining me for this YouTube video. Consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released and you can visit my website at projectwoman.com for where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.